Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about metoclopramide. Metoclopramide. Okay, let's go. Metoclopramide could be under different brand names. Either Reglan, Metonia, Metoclopramide Omega, Apple Metoclop, or Mazirin. The class. It is an anti emetic, a dopamine receptor antagonist, a prokinetic agent, and serotonin 5 HT4 receptor agonist. Different forms. Useful per aura, intramuscular injection, intravenous route, or subcutaneously. So you could get it in form of tablets like five milligram or ten milligram, or in form of solution at five milligram per five mil or ten milligram per ten mil, or in form of injection at five milligram per mil, and you come in different vials or two mil, ten mil or ten mil. Uses in anesthesia. We use metoclopramide to prevent aspiration. Impartial, but not in a complete bowel obstruction. As a matter of fact, bowel obstruction is a big contraindication. In chemotherapy, we use metoclopramide to prevent chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting, and that could be administered prophylactically. In functional dyspepsia or gastroparesis in diabetes mellitus and even in non diabetes mellitus, in ECOPS or analgesic induced headache or severe migraine, we use metoclopramide. Still on uses of metoclopramide in status migraineosus, in nausea, vomiting, and palliative care. In aparemesis gravidarum, in vertigo, gastrovaginal reflux disease, and radiation induced nausea and vomiting, and of course, intention headache. Now, in renal failure, if creatinine clearance is less than 40 mil per minute, use only about 50% of the expected dose. For example, if the expected dose is 10 milligram now twice daily and the creatinine clearance is less than 40 mils per minute, then not 10 milligram today is going to be 5 milligram. Okay. In end stage renal disease on hemodialysis, only 5 milligram twice daily is acceptable. So you don't go beyond that, please. In hepatic impairment, actually no dosage adjustment in mild cases, but in severe cases of hepatic impairment, you should have nothing more than five milligram QID, that is four times daily, nothing beyond that. Adverse reaction, AV block. And needless to say, when there's AV block, there'll be bradycardia. And of course, cardiac failure. A likelihood of increased blood pressure or decreased blood pressure. And you might be battling with supraventricular tachycardia. You may be dealing with acathesia. And someone familiar with psychiatry and psychiatric medications will say, wow, acathesia, yes. We're gonna have a lot of adverse reactions that are pretty close to you know, phenotypes inside the effects in psychiatry. So let's go on. You may be dealing with depression or neuroleptic malignant syndrome, seizures, suicide, tardive dyskinesia, urticaria, amenorrhea, canicomastia, diarrhea, restlessness, and of course, Parkinson's disease. 
and hyperplatinemia or galaturia. You may be having impotency, urinary frequency, urinary incontinence, agranulocytosis, hepatotoxicity, neutropenia, angioedema, laryngospasm, and bronchospasm with laryngeal edema. Contraindications. I'll spend more time here because metoclopramide is readily available in many pharmaceutical stores all over the world. So we should be careful and we should know what we're doing. Okay, hypersensitivity, like anaphylaxis, toxic abdominal necrolysis, or Stephen Johnson syndrome, presenting with angioedema, brocospasm, and laryngospasm, and everything like that. If that is part of the history, take metoclopramide off the table. In gastrointestinal obstruction, you know, metoclopramide is a prokinetic agent, meaning it is expected to enhance peristalsis and the content of gastrointestinal tract should be going down instead of coming up, that is preventing vomiting, right? Now, if there's obstruction, where do you want the content to go down to? Nowhere. There is likelihood of accumulation and backflow, and that will open the epiglottis, and the gastric content will then seep into the trachea. And what are we dealing with? Severe respiratory distress syndrome. That will kill the patient, right? In anesthesia, it's medicine syndrome. GIT perforation, no metoclopramide. In fulcromocytoma, no metoclopramide. In epilepsy, take it off the table. Now, tardive dyskinesia, acatesia, or neuroleptic malignant syndrome is possible here. Somebody will say, wow, yes. Pause, and let me explain. When you give metoclopramide, if this person is metoclopramide naive, I mean not taking this medication in the past, Prepare your mind for signs and symptoms of extra pyramidal side effects, okay? Because it's going to present like you have given neuroleptic you know, agent, like first generation antipsychotics, as if you've given your aldol or haloperidone, as you may you know, call it, or clopromazine. Okay, even some second generation antipsychotics might also give that, particularly if you give risperidone at a very high dosage, anything more than 8 milligrams of risperidone, though a second generation antipsychotics will also give you the side effects of extrapyramidal side effects. Huh. No, will give you features of extrapyramidal side effects. So that's why we're dealing with tardive dyskinesia here. Acatesia or neuroleptic malignant syndrome. In infants less than one year old, some centers will not even give metoclopramide at all. And I will agree with that. Okay, drug drug interaction. Well, because I may not be able to foretell the exact medication you will use or you are using or you are about to use at the same time that you'll be you not know, taking metoclopramide or you'll be prescribing metoclopramide, I will leave that judgment for you and your pharmacist. Please consult the pharmacist or clinical pharmacologist in your jurisdiction because the list is so long and I cannot write everything here. Certain considerations. Infertility and impotency should guide our decision in women and men, respectively. Please put that into consideration. Examples of situations where metoclopramide usage is welcome in chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting prophylaxis. We can give metoclopramide 10 mg per hour before treatment, or 10 mg per hour every six hours as may be needed. 
sparing. In dyspepsia, 5 mg to 10 mg per oral TID or QID before meals at hour of sleep. In hiccups, you can administer metoclopramine at the rate of 5 to 10 mg intravenously every 8 hours for about 5 to 10 days. In pediatrics, you can give metoclopramide at the rate of 0.1 to 0.2 mg per kilogram per dose every 6 to 8 hours in infants. But if it's adolescents, you can increase to 1 mg per kilogram. One. Yeah. Extra pyramidal side effects. Metoclopramide can cause tardive dyskinesia, and tardive dyskinesia is irreversible, okay, because there is no treatment per se. Even in psychiatry, when a patient comes down with tardive dyskinesia, we switch over to another medication entirely. And that is why in psychiatry, what now we are enjoying the use of second generation antipsychotic. That's why we we'll go for risperidone or the last resort, clozapine. But sorry, this is not a psychiatric class, right? It is more possible to have tardive dyskinesia if you are on metoclopramide for a long time or you are on a very high dose of metoclopramide. Or to make it worse, you are both. And someone is saying, how do you mean? If you are on metoclopramide for a long time, and unfortunately you are in need and you are taking a very high dose, you are likely going to come down with tardive dyskinesia. The treatment of tardive dyskinesia will start with the continuation of the medication. That is exactly what we do in psychiatry. Okay? Then, no metoclopramide for the next three months. For the next three months, put it on the map. No metoclopramide here. Okay? It can increase blood pressure and possibly tilt the patient to the pawn. Why? Because it's going to prolong the QT. And when we have to that the point, if it is not corrected, we'll teach the patient to ventricular tachycardia. If there is no correction of ventricular tachycardia, the patient will go into ventricular fibrillation, okay, from polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. Then ventricular fibrillation. If there is no defibrillation, then the patient will go into a systole. If no correction, if no advanced cardiac life support, if cold blue is not caught, the patient will die and will end up in the morgue. In pediatric age group, the side effects will be more marked, more pronounced, will be more increased in pediatric age group. Then I'm going to conclude here that if we have our way, we don't give metoclopramide in pediatric age group. That is food for thought. Okay? We can debate that. But as for me, I'm not comfortable prescribing metoclopramide for kids less than eight years. No, I'm not. Okay, with that, I've come to the end of this presentation. Remember to share. Remember to subscribe. Thank you. I appreciate it.